from this program, I want to know like if I actually want to do engineering or not, like have like a solid idea of it. Also, like if we actually build a prototype, that'd be cool. Cause, like I don't know if we'll have enough time for that, but like if we actually do, that'd be cool. Whoa, stop. That's Isaiah, one of the eight brilliant students they selected for Hardware Park's med tech program. Awesome. And is everyone else here? Okay, cool. Uh, we've also got Enoch, Brooks, Matthew, Joseph, Molly, Jeremy, and Karen. Okay, cool. We've got a medical and industrial hub for a city. Wonderful. We've got two weeks to prototype medical devices and... Okay, wonderful. A building where we can do all of that in. Nice. Um, oh, that's everything, right? Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and start. Hey, I'm Gabriel Talley, a filmmaker from Birmingham, and Hardware Park contacted me to help document the progression of the students through the program for two weeks in the summer of 2023. And at first, we didn't really know each other all that well. We mostly just grumbled about the heat. Ah, um, the heat. Sheesh. We got these ones all pricey. I understand right? you need that shot, but we need that air. It's getting hot. <laughs> but the first few days were understandably awkward as everyone met and talked with each other more, figuring out the process of the program. Okay, so I know who you are. These parts probably didn't, but you are the rest of y'all. I'm Brooks. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I actually did say that like first day we were all just dead silent and now it's just like this is awkward. That's the weird thing you know is I'm usually very introverted at school. Something about this makes it more e makes it easier to be extroverted you know. Just like Molly you know she's really outgoing too and I, I like that about her you know she was the one that tried to start up a conversation she was like well this is awkward. I was like <laughs> I was like yeah yeah it was. And quickly, the students began work on two main ideas. Molly, Karen, Joseph, and Matthew began prototyping a more versatile design for crutches, while Isaiah, Brooks, Enoch, and Jeremy began prototyping a wearable inhaler. Yeah. Because of the battery, but yeah. I, mean, I think medicine's gonna be lighter. But if you could 3D print an interface under the tube, you could actually hack Hey, um, get a get an old chair that's in this building and take the gas spring out of it. Yeah, uh, I bet we can find one. Y'all well, just get me dimensions and I could probably do it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'll be a computer or program, but just need dimensions. It might take a bit just to smith and I think. You want to try to do that? Yeah. It'd be like super ambitious. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun though. It'd be like dealing with Boston. But yes. Me and we could. We just had, how about I say we had the mention of this? And you can maybe. You need this better? I don't know. Like do you need it back, period? I don't know. Okay. And as they learn more about each other, I was able to interview them and learn more about them too. Karen and I actually talked about how she processes life musically. To me everything kinda goes back to music because everything's in harmony with everything. If it's not in harmony, then it's not gonna work. You kind of have to figure out how to make all the pieces fit together as if you're coming up with a song. Because if you're coming up with a song, you can't put the first verse before the chorus. So yeah, it kind of, with music, it kind of just gives me a map, sort of, kind of. And I quickly realized I knew much, much less about BattleBots with Enoch than I was letting on. TV show? Yeah. Battle Rock? Where it's like, they got one that's like, Scrap Man, and then it like, got like the... What? Well, <laughs> Scrap Man? Well, right. <laughs> Weren't those the names on the... I've never seen a Battle Rock called Scrap Man. I mean, I'll keep my eyes out though. But those connections help the guidance of the instructors take shape as well. Lloyd, Mark Foster, and Derek each helped design the days of the program around a particular theme. And it isn't like the students worked in a literal park. It isn't really like that. But everyone's personality came out more and more as the program became more hands-on. Watching everyone emulate Lloyd's drawing skills or even take home rolls of his drawing paper or getting tutorials from Mark on the warehouse's tools ended up becoming a really magical experience. Derek helped with 3D printing, even cutting bike wires for the Crutches project and being a point of contact for the students. 
And it really felt important for all the teachers to be a resource whenever someone needed it, or to have an answer and be ready to field any kind of question they may have had. Yeah, it's not Thank on the other side. Much. All right, so we might need like a crowbar or something, to be honest. Crowbar? Like the only spiders? useless thing is They are here. beneficial to us. Would you rather have spiders or ants? Yeah. Spiders are not Spiders? I mean both. I'm fine with both. Tragic. So I can't choose. Everyone loved how fast-paced and spontaneous it felt, though, generating ideas quickly and figuring out new ways to help someone or to help someone in the best way possible. Everyone just really loved talking to each other, learning random facts about the person across from us, getting really attached to these people, these ideas, and these groups, and the prospects of really making a difference in the city. Even just laughing while sawing wood or sanding down a piece of PVC pipe fed into a spark of inspiration that said, hey, I would really like to do this more, or hey, I'm actually really good at this. But each student was able to hone their skills over the program's two-week period. After shifting to new ideas in the second week, a few students grouped together to work with an outside engineer on a more focused issue for a single client, crafting a medical IV pole with the intent of incorporating a friendlier and warmer design for use in the home. I got to speak with Foster about this. In helping to create final renderings for both the wearable inhaler and the IV pole, he spoke to his own philosophy for design and engineering and the experience of the camp as a whole. I guess that sometimes I think about design and engineering is somewhat of an invisible career where when you're little you're aware that you know doctors exist because you have to go to the doctor as a child you know teachers exist because you see that in school but how everything that surrounds you got there uh, is somewhat of a mystery so I'm really glad that um, at least this small group was able to see a little bit kind of behind that curtain or behind that process of how things are made or how, how they come to, to be in the world. And I got to see the students become more comfortable leaning on each other throughout. Even if they were working just on their own, they were still comfortable asking each other questions and interacting with each other. Thank you. Can you make an outside? Have you seen? So I'm making a, a two to put that all in? Yeah. I'm, okay. I, I trust y'all. I'm, <laughs> I'm still kind of confused, but... All of a sudden we're just, just sitting there. It's like, I'm doing my thing, they're doing theirs, and they're all working towards the, the crudge, and it's just like, yeah, it's nice. I like working with them. And ultimately, each project reached a finished state before the students were able to show them off, either with completed renderings or completely functional prototypes. And it really meant a lot to see the connections the students had both made with each other and the subjects of their projects. Like, I actually kind of got attached to these um, uh, projects and stuff, and really wanted them to work out. I just want to see this idea we got here. Check out this idea. It's the idea to distract you. He's distracting me. I'm already distracted. <laughs> Our ideas work. I also got to speak with Matt Fitzgerald and Arnar Thors, the owners of Fitz Thors Industries and the facilitators of Hardware Park's MedTech program, about the results of the. Whoa, stop. Stop again. Hey, actually, hey, can we run that advertisement? The, the one about Fitz, Fitz Thors that we made. Yeah, yeah, okay, wonderful. Go, yeah, go ahead and play it. At the innovation epicenter of Birmingham lies Fitz Thors, where the brightest middle-aged minds of the day wield industrial strength, bewildering brain power, and technological wherewithal to shape the course of our astute state's future. Helping to develop the Rampart medical device, who better to defend our bastion of hope than the conquerors of radiation? But genuinely, Matt and Arna are aligned in Hardware Park's philosophy, building off their own successes working across multiple industries and helping to develop the Rampart medical device, a shield against harmful radiation, and that informed their ideas for Hardware Park. I think really it comes down to, and specifically Hardware Park, what we're trying to do is pass along that knowledge and make sure that the next generation is armed with the tools that they need to overcome challenges, to develop the next great product um, and so that's one thing I look forward to is helping younger people get that passion for learning and not being scared to take on challenges that seem difficult or seem like uh, they can't be overcome and, and start kind of chipping away at that and then seeing what the success of that looks like. So like if you're big into sports, you're big into music or cars or whatever, tie it to something that you enjoy. I 
and don't be constrained to 2023. And I really think a lot of those tools showed up. The program helped the students prepare for their next year of high school, their first year of college, or it helped them discover something entirely new that they loved about engineering. After this camp, I know that me and my teammates created something that could help millions of people. And it feels good knowing that you may, you help to make something that can help people live. Because this program like opened my mind on like how many medical devices there are and how many challenges there are in people and many ways that you can help them. I just want to be as present as possible, be as present as possible. And after, I want to be able to say that I did something that made an impact. I want to be able to say I did this and I feel great about it, that I did it. I just want to, I don't know, I want to be proud of what we did. I mean, like, a week is already passed. Has anything happened to, like, kind of change your perception of, like, the program, or at least, like, working with, like, the other people in your group? Well, one thing I do know is I definitely want to go into engineering now, so that's, that's good. I honestly think that's the beauty in this whole thing. All of it is in the simplicity of the program. Being able to go from nothing to something, and being able to look back on this as a complete project. And maybe, way off into the future, those memories won't be rose-tinted, Polaroid-shaded, or staticky like an old television, but they will be memories of something meaningful.